For the last few years, a team of researchers in the United States and the United Kingdom have been researching airborne contamination in the operating room, especially the disruption of ultra-clean ventilation. The following video clips reflect that research and establish two facts. First, ultra-clean ventilation, while extremely important, can be easily disrupted. Second, waste heat from forced air blowers not only destroys laminar flow, it dumps air from the floor into the surgical field. Did you ever wonder where the waste air from the forced air warming goes? Knowing that heat rises, did you realize that a forced air blower releases 900 watts of waste heat under the surgical table? If you're a surgeon, did you ever wonder why you're sweating whenever forced air warming is used while everyone else in the room is freezing? In the next eight minutes, you'll see a series of experiments revealing the impact of waste heat in surgery. These experiments were conducted in an ultra-clean, high-performance laminar flow operating room or laboratory. Since we can't see air, we add either tracer particles or bubbles to the air to make it visible. Both the tracer particles and the bubbles are neutral buoyancy. They neither rise nor sink on their own, but simply ride the air currents. In this demonstration, you'll see what properly functioning laminar airflow should look like. The tracer particles are illuminated by a thin plane of green laser light so that individual air currents can be seen. When the ventilation fan is turned on, the tracer particles are immediately cleared from the top down. This is what laminar ventilation should look like, no turbulence. While you're watching the next experiments, consider three things. First, air should never ever be seen rising within an ultra-clean ventilation field. Rising air means that there's a problem. Second, air from the floor is always contaminated. Third, it takes only one germ to cause an infection in the presence of implanted foreign materials such as an orthopedic implant, spinal hardware, neurosurgical plastic, or cardiac valves and wires. One single germ can cause an infection of an implant and it is usually from airborne contamination. In this experiment, we see a lower body forced air blanket on a mannequin covered with a standard surgical drape. A plane of laser light illuminates the visible tracer particles that have been added to the waste forced air. When the heater is off, the waste air exiting from below the lower edge of the drape is safely carried away by the ventilation air. When the heater is turned on, the heated waste air escapes from below the drape and then rises alongside the surgical table, easily penetrating the downward laminar flow ventilation. Eventually, the warm air cools, loses buoyancy, and falls into the surgical field. Next, we look at the highly synergistic combination of waste heat and the obstruction caused by a surgical light. The light creates a dead zone, the space under the light that is shielded from the ventilation airflow. In this experiment, a forced air blanket is under the surgical drape and is venting the waste air toward the floor. Visible tracer particles have been added. With the heater turned off, the room temperature waste air is safely forced away from the table and out the wall vents. This is exactly the way an operating room ventilation system is supposed to work. No tracer particles can be seen above the table, even in the dead zone under the light. In contrast, when the forced air heater is turned on, the waste heat rises in a tightly organized chimney. The heat escaping from under drapes near the floor rises straight into the dead zone created by the surgical light. From there, it's blown into the sterile surgical field. Waste heat escaping from under the surgical table heats the contaminated air normally resident near the floor and causes it to also rise into the dead zone under the light. We've all been taught that anything below table height, including the air, is contaminated. The waste air that you're watching is coming from the floor and is most certainly contaminated. The ventilation is powerless to stop the rising warm contaminated waste air. Next, we're going to see what happens when you combine waste heat vented from under the operating table with the flow obstruction caused by a surgeon. The surgeon's head and body make a cone-shaped flow boundary dead zone that is shielded from the ventilation airflow. Once again, visible tracer particles have been added. With the forced air heater turned off, the waste air does not rise and is easily cleared by the ventilation. In contrast, with the forced air heater turned on, the waste heat rises unimpeded inside the dead zone surrounding the surgeon. The dead zone becomes a chimney for the waste heated air, shielding it from the ventilation. 
Heat off, no rising air. Heat on, waste heat rising unimpeded into the sterile surgical field. The same experiment can be done with neutral buoyancy bubbles. With the heat off, the bubbles do not rise and are easily cleared by the ventilation airflow. When the forced air heat is turned on, the bubbles ride the rising air current propelled by the waste heat into the dead zone surrounding the surgeon. Once again, the bubbles end up in the sterile field. Now we're going to do the same experiment in a high efficiency, ultra clean laminar flow operating room. In this case, we're using air-free conductive fabric patient warming blankets turned on high as the control because they generate almost no waste heat. You can see that the bubbles follow the ventilation air down and away just like we saw when the forced air heater was turned off. However, with the forced air heater turned on, the bubbles rise with the waste heat into the dead zone surrounding the surgeon and then into the sterile field. The waste heat escapes from under the table, mixes with the contaminated air near the floor, and causes the floor air to rise. Most of the heated air rising into the dead zone around the surgeon is actually contaminated air from the floor, not simply exhaust air from the forced air warmer. If the waste forced air were unheated, it probably wouldn't matter. However, because there are 900 watts of waste heat in that air, it definitely does matter. The waste heat rises, especially in the presence of a flow obstruction such as a surgeon. The contaminated air propelled by the waste heat easily defeats the protection of the laminar ventilation system and contaminates the sterile surgical field. I could show you how other flow obstructions, such as the Mayo stand, the ether screen, or the anesthetist, also combine synergistically with the waste heat to destroy the ventilation flow. We'll have to save that for another time. Do these experiments prove that forced air blowers cause infection? Of course not. These studies only prove airborne contamination. An infection study would require huge numbers of patients. However, there is anecdotal evidence of reduced orthopedic infections. Ridgeview Medical Center has a reputation of surgical excellence. Their efforts to reduce surgical site infections include creating a center for joint replacement, involving an infection control physician to improve processes, and mandating warming for all total joint patients. Ridgeview transitioned from forced air to air-free conductive fabric warming in 2008. In 2006, their total knee replacement infection rate was 1.55% and the rate dropped to 0.29% for years 2008 and 2009 combined, an 81% reduction. One of the top-rated NHS hospitals in the United Kingdom was experiencing a 3.1% infection rate in total joint replacement cases while using forced air warming. During the six months after switching to air-free conductive fabric warming, their infection rate has dropped to 0.81%, a 74% decrease. Neither of these anecdotal cases constitute scientific proof that the waste heat from forced air warming was causing these infections. However, the temporal relationship between eliminating the waste heat at these two hospitals and the dramatic reduction in joint infections cannot be ignored. What's the takeaway message? I urge you to just say no. Do not use forced air warming for cases involving implanted foreign materials, especially orthopedic implants. We all know that warm patients do better than cold ones, so warming is good. However, you might want to consider switching to one of the air-free warming technologies that do not produce significant waste heat.